What is the significance of negative displacement and positive displacement? How do we calculate the total distance covered? And how do you plot a motion graph? That is what we will learn in this video. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Map Institute. In this video, we will understand the concept about displacement along straight line. This is very important part to begin with kinematics. In kinematics, we understand the motion of a particle where the forces are not involved. When you involve forces, it becomes dynamics, right? Example 1 here is related to displacement function and motion graph. Consider a particle P traveling along a straight line such that its displacement S meters from a fixed point O T seconds after passing through O is given by S equals to S T minus T square. The graph of displacement against time for first 7 seconds is given to you. Most of the time you have to sketch a graph. But to make it simple, we have already given you the graph. The idea is to understand the concept of displacement and distance traveled. Part A is discuss displacement and total distance traveled at key points. Now, what could be the key points? This is another very interesting thing to understand. Key points could be starting point, end point, the turning points, and these intercepts, right? Part B. When is the particle at the starting point? That means starting point is when t is 0. Identify the time interval when particle is to the left of O. Represent the information on a motion graph. So, motion graph, two dimension is given to us. We will see how do we sketch a motion graph along a straight line, right? So, along a straight line, where we will have point of reference O. So, these are the four questions to understand the concept of displacement. I like you to pause the video, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. To begin with, we will go through a few definitions. When I say particle, it means what? Particle is defined as an object with negligible dimensions where the rotational forces and air resistance can be ignored. Mass of the particle is concentrated at a single point. All objects in our examples will be considered as particles. Displacement. Normally represented by S of t, displacement at any time t, is a function of an object with respect to is a position. It is a position of the object with respect to reference point. Right? Normally, this reference point is referred to as O, the origin. Now, displacement is considered positive if the point P is on the right of origin. It is equal to 0 if point P is at the origin and it is less than 0 means negative when p is to the left of origin o. So, think like a number line. Okay. Distance is always positive. It is represented by d of t in my videos. It is total distance traveled in the given duration. It is always positive. And what is a motion graph? Motion graph can be represented in 1D along a straight line or 2D along x, y plane. So, we will focus more on the motion graph in one dimension along a straight line. Perfect. Now, let us see how do we answer these questions. The very first one is to find the displacement and the distance at key points. Right? So, let us identify these key points. As I said, t equals to 0 is a key point. 
And then this turning point is also a key point for us. On the graph, it looks to be at 3. So I'll put T as 3. Then we have another T intercept at 6. That is a key point. And the end point is at 7, right? So it is less than equal to 7. So that is another key point for us. So at these time values, from the given equation, we have to find the displacement. Displacement is position related to origin O. So let's calculate by substituting in the formula given or the function given for S, the displacement. So if I put 0 here, what do I get? Well, in this case, I get 6 times 0 minus 0 squared, and that indeed is 0. Right. Distance traveled is still 0 because it is just the starting point. At 3, we add 3 to it. T is 3 minus 3 squared, and that gives you the displacement at 3 which is 6 times 3, 18 minus 9 is 9. All units are in meters for displacement, right? And for distance also, it will be in meters. Time is in seconds. When I put 6, I get 6 times 6, which is 36. And from 36, we take away 6 squared which is also 36, and now the displacement becomes 0. At 7, 6 times 7 is 42, and 7 squared is 49. So, when you take away 42 from 49, you get minus 7 as your displacement. You see, displacement could be positive or negative or even 0 in between, right? But distance is always positive. It keeps on adding. So, what has happened here? Let's try to realize. I'd like you, you to pause the video at this time and find the distance in the first 3 seconds, then in 6 seconds and 7 seconds. Perfect. And then we'll continue. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Most of my students are right there on top of their class getting awards and scholarships like Akshay. After attending university, the winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandivani. Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulik Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. Yes. Now let us see how do we calculate the distance. Let us try to calculate the distance traveled during this movement of the object. So, starting at origin, displacement is 0, distance is also 0. Now, when you reach t is 3 seconds, the object actually goes up in one direction from 0 to 3. You see that part, right? So, it covers a distance of, at 3, it covers a distance of 9 meters. Do you see that? So, that is 9 meters. So, you can add these two and you get 9 as your answer. Perfect. But now, what has happened between 3 to 6? The object comes down. So, it comes back to its original position. So, in displacement, this was minus 3. But as far as the distance is concerned, it is always considered to be positive. So, what happens now is in another 3 seconds, it comes down by 9 units, right? So, what really happens is that 9 gets added again. So, we add absolute value of 9. Do you see the difference? And it becomes 18. Now, at this stage, you will realize that the displacement has become 0, adding 9 with minus 9. But the distance has doubled up. 9, absolute value of 9 will be added. It becomes 18 meters. Got it? Then it goes further down 
by 7 units. So, to 18, we will use absolute value of minus 7 to be added and that gives us 25. So, the total distance covered is 25 meters, correct? So, from here, what do you conclude? Well, clearly, the distance is addition of all the displacements with their absolute value, correct? So, we can say distance is cumulative sum with positive displacement. You can say absolute value. of displacements, correct? You understand now, right? So, that is how we will figure out distance and displacement. Now, here is an exercise for you. I want you to calculate the displacement and distance when time is 5 units. So, when time is 5 units, we are at this position. Is that clear to you? So, this is an exercise for you. You can substitute 5, find the displacement and also find the distance covered in first 5 seconds. Is that clear? Perfect. Let us move on and take up part B and C. Now, we need to find when is the particle at the starting point. Now, starting point means at origin, at O. Right, so because we started at origin, right? So at starting point, it is important to see that this is your starting point. Displacement is going to be zero, right? So note at starting point, t is zero. So when I put t as zero, what do I get? I get S equals to 6 times 0 minus 0, which is 0. So, displacement is 0 at starting point. The object started from the reference point O itself. But the question is, when is the particle at the starting point? So, of course, it is at the starting point at t equals to 0 because displacement is 0. So, what is the other point? So, this you can find by factoring the displacement equation, right? So, S equals to 6t minus t square, right? You can factor out t. So, you get 6 minus t. So, that means that at t equals to 6, it is 0, right? So, sorry, at t equals to 0, it is 0. And at t equals to 6, S is 0, correct? So, displacement is 0 at t equals to 6 also. So, it is 0 at 2 points from the factor, these two factors could be 0, right? So, we know when is the particle at the starting point? It is at starting point when t equals to 0 and when t equals to 6, correct? So, when you substitute 6, you get s equals to 0. Now, part c is identify the time interval when the particle is to the left of O. So, so this is part B for us and part C is left of O. So, left of O means that the displacement is less than 0, means negative, you get the idea. We just calculated displacement and we saw that after 6, it is to the left of O. Oh, right. So, the interval is when this graph is negative. Correct? You could also see from this equation, it is negative from t equals to 6 to 7, because we have included 7. Right? That is the time period. So, from t 6 to 7, right? it is on the left of 0. Well, at t it is at 0, so to the left of 0 will not include t equals to 6, but greater than 6 and less than 7. So, it is on left of 0 when the displacement is negative. Perfect? Okay. Now, let us see. How do we sketch the motion graph along a straight line? 
this is also a motion graph, let me tell you that. With time, we are given displacement, right? So, displacement versus time, right? That is a motion graph, but this is a two dimensional motion graph. We are taking two dimensions as time and displacement. Now, we will see what is the motion graph along a straight line. That is key. So, let me draw a reference line here. And let us say this is our starting point O, right? The equation is. S equals 2. It is better to write it in factored form. If I take T common, I get 6 minus T and we are looking into time which is between 0 to 7, right? We identify that the turning points are at, there is only one turning point and that is at T equals to 3 and it crosses 0 at this point, correct? So, what is really happening here? Since the displacement increases from 0 to 3 and it is positive, right? It is going up, increasing. So, from 0 to time 3, the displacement is increasing. You see that? So, at t equals to 3, displacement s is actually 9, correct? That was the maximum value. Now, it turned at this particular time, right? So, it turned and it went towards and further down, correct? It reached this point O when the displacement is 0 at t equals to 6, right? So, at this point, after 6 seconds, it came back to its original position, correct? Displacement S is 0, right? Here, Again, S equals to 0. And then in the 7th second, it was on the left and at T equals to 7, we found that the value was minus 7, right? So, it was, let me substitute S equals 6 times 7, which is 42, minus 7 square, which is 49. 49, that gives me minus 7, right? So, this point here, is at t equals to 7 and displacement equals to minus 7. Do you see that? So, that becomes the motion graph for the given situation. The starting was at t equals to 0, displacement was 0. Now, it is not necessary that displacement will be 0 for t equals to 0, okay? So, that is all we got. And from here, we also calculated distance, right? Let me show you distance calculation once again. Distance D is equal to, so from 0 to 9, we cover a distance of 9, and then we cover a distance from 9 to 0, which was minus 9, absolute value, right, of minus 9, and then we added absolute value of minus 7, because distances are always positive. So, 18 and 7 gives us 25 meters, correct? So, distances are given in meters here and time is in seconds, perfect? So, we know time is in seconds and displacement is in meters. Also, distance is in meters. Is that clear to you? So, that is how we will summarize the information. Now, here is the next question for you. I like you to answer this particular question. It is on same line. You will notice one thing here that at t equals to 0, displacement is not 0. So, keep that in mind and then answer this particular question. So, I hope with this you have understood clearly how do we answer questions based on displacement along a straight line. Perfect. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.